quickly on, but naughty Samuel Pepys. <laughs> Diary of Charles Davenport, 15th of April, 2015. I've just met this absolutely terrific girl. <laughs> went, went to a dinner party with a frightfully nice couple I met at a charity auction. He, Rollo, is a hedge fund manager or something, money anyway, spends it in large quantities from the look of her house in Belgravia and the quality of the wines he dished up. She, Jules, is something in fashion, designer, I don't know. Usual kind of crowd there. Conversation, fairly predictable. What a waste of space Milliband is. <laughs> what, a, what a shrewd statesman Cameron is. <laughs> Usual guff. Can't say I listen much because of this girl. The plasmon set me next to her, which was really good luck, and we just clicked. Her, her name's Vinny. Lavinia Trumpington, blonde, thin, but still with enough, you know, womanly curves, sort of thing. <laughs> Late twenties, maybe, stunning. I don't believe in that love at first sight garbage, but this evening I felt like I'd been run over and processed by a combine harvester. <laughs> she gave me her phone number, and I don't think I'm going to be able to concentrate on anything till I see her again. She, she didn't say anything about it, obviously, but I, I just knew she was getting the same kind of tingly vibes for me as I was for her. <laughs> I think I made an impression. Diary of the Right Honourable Lavinia Trumpington. <laughs> 15th of April, 2015. Went to a terribly dreary dinner party. <laughs> Rollo and Jules, who spent most of the time, as usual, boasting about how much money they've got. Jules had sat me next to Rollo quite deliberately, I'm sure. While our affair was going on, he swore she never knew a thing about it, but Jules isn't stupid. She had 13 years to find out. I think she just chose not to make any comment, confident that he'd never break up the marriage and come slinking back to her in time. Which is, of course, what he did, like the creep he is. <laughs> Sitting next to him, I felt nothing. I I'm still amazed that I let the affair go on as long as I it did. Looking back, it was just... 13 years out of my life, 13 years wasted when I could have been getting married and having babies like most of the girls I was at school with. At 43, the ticking of the old biological clock is getting rather deafening. I'm afraid the chances of Daddy L and the male heir he so wants to pass the estate to are getting slimmer by the minute. Maybe I should just reconcile myself to nothing happening on that front and Take up bridge. <laughs> oh, and sitting on the other side of me, there was a rather dreary little man called Charles, something like that. <laughs> We had some mutual acquaintances. Clearly, he went to the right schools and that sort of thing. At the end of the evening, we exchanged telephone numbers. God knows why. <laughs> Diary of Charles Davenport. 16th of April. <laughs> right, right, lunchtime, I finally plucked up carriage to phone Vinnie. I can't believe it. She's agreed to meet me for dinner at Rules next Friday. Don't know whether I'm more excited or scared. How will I manage to survive till Friday? 21st of April. Just back from the most wonderful dinner at Rules with Vinnie, the perfect venue, and we just clicked. Conversation flow. I felt like I'd known her forever. I think this could be the real thing. <laughs> 21st of April. Dinner at Rawls with Charles Davenport. Typical of him, I discover, to have chosen such an unimaginative venue. <laughs> Conversation very sticky, went in fits and starts. Seems he doesn't work, lives on some family trust fund shared with his brother Julian. I'd agreed to see him again. 
God knows why. <laughs> Hope he goes for somewhere more exciting than rules next time. 28th of April. Deal with me at rules again. <laughs> she clearly loves it there. We found out more about each other. Apparently she's a right honourable. Father's Lord Trumpington, not the genuine article, any life peer, so the title goes when he snuffs it. I still think I read something about Lord Trumpington in the papers. Can't remember exactly what. Taking a pot shot at some animal rights activist, was it? Anyway, much more importantly, afterwards, I took Vinnie in a taxi back to her place, nice little town house in Pimlico. I was all set to do the decent thing, quick peck on the cheek and tell the cabby Knightsbridge and don't spare the horses. <laughs> but she invited me in for a coffee. Whilst well, we were inside, no messing about with coffee, <laughs> straight up to the bedroom, sensational, Lord Roland Hay. <laughs> Billy and me is forever. <laughs> 28th of April. <laughs> Dinner with Charlie at Bloody Rules again. <laughs> Invited him back to my place for the inevitable sex. Messy as ever. <laughs> and not great. I'm afraid shit-faced Rollo's set the bar rather high in the bedroom department. Still, I'm in no position to be choosy. Thank God Mummy's no longer around to know how near the bottom of the Debrett's barrel I'm scraping. <laughs> <laughs> Nineteenth of May. Still no visit from Auntie Flo. Tempted to try a pregnancy test, but I'll give it a few more days. Twenty-third of May. Pregnancy test positive. It's what I wanted. And I suppose Charlie Davenport's no worse than any other man. I haven't told him yet. But I will very soon. It'll give me an excuse not to have any more of that sex nonsense for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Diary of Julian Davenport, 2nd of June. Call from little Charlie today, and a big surprise. He's asked me to be best man at his wedding. Well, I suppose even someone like Charlie can always find some woman gullible enough to marry him. <laughs> Lavinia Trumpington, she's called. Daughter, it turns out, of Lord Trumpington. The one who's always banging on in the Lords about how we Brits should be allowed to carry guns like the Yanks. <laughs> Sensible fellow. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, he's not the genuine article. Born Reginald Trumpington, just some jumped up northern industrialist who bribed that shyster Blair to give him a life <laughs> Dripping with loot though. He's got an amazing spread in Somerset, Chesking, stately home, huge lake, acres of woodland. I'd actually been shooting there. I remember the weekend well. Cost me a bloody fortune. So, my little idiot brother seems to have landed on his feet. Notebook of Mr. Chalice. Seventeenth of June. As solicitor administering the Davenport Trust, I had an appointment today with Charles Davenport, the younger of the two brothers who share equally in its proceeds and who are beneficiaries of each other's wills. By arrangement, Charles Davenport brought with him his fiancée, Lavinia Trumpington, daughter of Lord Trumpington. With her father's agreement, she wishes to make a new will, leaving her estate to her soon-to-be husband and any issue of their marriage. She made no secret of the fact that, though not yet married, she is already pregnant. A situation which seems increasingly prevalent among today's young people. Not that it would be my place to pass any comment on the morality of such arrangements. <laughs> the proposal that Charles Davenport put forward seems to me to represent sensible estate planning, 
So I agreed to draft Lavinia Trumpington's will as requested. Thirtieth of June. Today, I actually tied the knot with Vinnie in the family chapel at Jessie's. I couldn't be happier. I feel like all my birthdays and Christmases have come at once. <laughs> in spite of a couple of rather off-colour remarks about my intelligence that Julian put into his best man speech. <laughs> Still, I suppose it was all in good fun. <laughs> Otherwise, the whole day went swimmingly. Vinnie's father was very good about it all, given the circumstances. He seemed just very relieved to know that Vinnie's pregnant, <laughs> as he kept saying, in a manner that was rather... <laughs> he is a bit of a rough diamond. <laughs> Mind you, it, it's wonderful to think that a child of mine would inherit chestings and all the rest. Vinnie and I went for our wedding night to a very shushed-up country house hotel, <coughs> but she was feeling queasy and had to leave halfway through dinner. When I got to the bedroom, she was asleep, which uh, rather disappointed me. We haven't had a uh, little old roll in the hay <laughs> since she found out she was pregnant. Uh, still, I feel I must respect her wishes in this. The health of the baby is what matters. We have a whole lifetime together to catch up on little rose in the hay. <laughs> 30th of June. Got through the wedding. <laughs> God, I'm now Lavinia Davenport, how dreary. Still, the baby will be legitimate, which is all that matters. Managed to avoid wedding night sex by pretending to be asleep. <laughs> Think I can play that card right through the pregnancy. Then maybe let Charlie have his wicked way again when we need a spare to go with the air. <laughs> so, do I feel any different as Mrs. Davenport? No. Charlie still bores the pants off me. Do I feel anything for him? Absolutely not. Still, the aged parents never felt anything for each other and their marriage survived more than 30 years till mummy's cancer let her off the hook. Hey ho. <laughs> Did Charlie and Vinnie's wedding Got a couple of jibes into my best man's speech about how thick he is. Everyone roared, though as ever, Charlie was too thick to realise he was being insulted. <laughs> Spoke to Chalice on the phone a couple of days before the ceremony, just to clarify things. It seems that if Vinnie pops her clogs prematurely, Charlie and the child cop the lot. Wonder if my little brother remembers that under the terms of the Davenport family trust, he and I are still mutual beneficiaries of each other's wills. <laughs> 24th of September. Lord Trumpington has got all his cronies coming down for the shooting next weekend, and charts to show the rate of the good his new son-in-law. No pressure then. <laughs> <laughs> Vinnie, very uncomfortable in the hot weather. Seeing her quack, who says there are some worries about the pregnancy, Vinnie thinks separate bedrooms would be a good idea. <laughs> Though she knows best. The baby's what matters. I'm so happy to have such a caring wife. 24th of September. Daddy insists I've got to be around at Chestings for his bloody shooting weekend. Can't wait to show off his pregnant daughter to all those tedious old farts he usually invites. Doctor's appointment this morning, gender confirmed, male. Told daddy he was ecstatic and all fine with the pregnancy. But I told Charlie there were complications, which means I've managed to get him out of my bedroom for the duration. <laughs> So that's progress. <laughs> oh, forgot to tell Charlie about the baby's gender. Must remember to do that sometime. Had a call on the mobile from Rollo. 
sounded quite keen again. Talked of booking the usual room at the usual hotel for next Wednesday afternoon. Well, obviously, I told him to forget it. Till after the babe is born. <laughs> I don't want him seeing my body in its current condition. But I can't deny, I was quite tempted. Just to get this bloody pregnancy over, not to mention Daddy's bloody shooting weekend. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> Diary of Lord Trumpington, 24th of September. Don't believe in this diary writing nonsense myself. Just another form of navel gazing. And I haven't made the money I've made by gazing at my bloody navel. Still, the ghostwriter who's doing my memoirs said I should keep a record, so that's what I'm bloody doing. And at least today, there's something worth bloody reporting. Had a call this morning from the daughter, Lavinia. Sprog she's carrying is a boy! Bloody great. She's finally done something to pay me back for all the money I spent on her education. I have to see to it the boy carries my name, though. I'm not having chestings and everything else owned by someone called Davenport. No, I will order my son-in-law, the half-wit Charlie, to change his bloody surname. Oh, he won't argue. Never does. He's a streak of piss if ever I saw one. <laughs> <laughs> Report from Detective Inspector Timpson, 3rd of October. I had a call from the Commissioner this morning asking me to investigate an incident at a stately home called Chestings in Somerset. Now, I realised it must be serious. The Somerset and Avon boys will do anything to stop Scotland Yard muscling in on their patch, so it must be very serious. Turned out the incident involved a prominent member of the House of Lords, Trumpington. After the fuss the old boys made about law and order issues, relaxation of gun control, huh? well, no wonder the Commissioner wants the kid gloves out for this one. I got briefed on the phone in the car down to Chestings. Trumpington was hosting a weekend shooting party and out on the estate on Saturday he apparently tripped and took the full blast of his shotgun. <coughs> Accident, of course. No one's mentioned the word murder and I will be very careful that I don't. Commissioner wants me to nose around though. Get the SP. There's quite a militant anti-shooting lobby lurking around in the undergrowth. Shoot the shooters, they're called. A rumour was picked up that they might be targeting Chestings this weekend. Well, doing away with Lord Trumpington would be just the kind of stunt they'd like to have pulled off. Commissioner wants me to find out as much as I can. Try to have a coherent response before the press get hold of the story. I must tread carefully. Third of October, phone of Mickey Lipton, WhatsApp encrypted message to shoot the shooter's cell. Well, what are the results at Chestings? Death of a capitalist mogul like Lord Trumpington's just the kind of high profile story we need. Congratulations to whichever brother did the deed. Usual procedure though, no direct claim for responsibility. Just start the rumour mill churning that STS might have been behind it. That'll get a few more of the animal muttering lobby quaking in their boots. Keep up the good work, and soon shooting will have gone the way of fox hunting. Solidarity, brothers! Third of October, the diary of Charles Trumpington. At Chestings, still in shock about what happened to him his own man. Ghastly. They keep trying to make shooting safer, but you were never really a half a human error. Apparently, there's some police detective from Scotland Yard down here asking everyone lots of questions. But I suppose they have to go through all that even with an accident. Vinay's taking the news pretty well, really. Never quite sure if she actually felt anything for the old monster. Still, just as well, she's not upset about the baby coming. And I had a chat with Julian in the Rose Garden this morning. He asked if I realised that now old Trumpington's off the scene, Vinnie will inherit the lot. 
I hadn't actually. He also told me that if I was questioned by this Detective Inspector Johnny, I should say that during Saturday shooting, Julian and I were never out of each other's sight. He said it would simplify things. I agreed to do it. Rather an odd thing to ask them, I thought. <laughs> Report of Detective Inspector Timpson, 4th of October. I've finished questioning all of the guests at the Chesting shooting party. Nobody seems to have been anywhere near Lord Trumpington when he died. He was quite deep into the woods. Why he was so far away from the rest of the party, no one knows. The people who seem to have been nearest to him geographically were two brothers, Julian and Charles Davenport. The latter is the deceased son-in-law, and he apparently now calls himself Charles Trumpington. Anyway, with all the guns that were firing, both brothers deny hearing the fatal shot, which would have come from behind them rather than in front. They also claim not to have been out of each other's sight all day and not to have seen anything suspicious. The young one, Charles, is... Well, he seems to be on the verge of educationally subnormal. <laughs> or whatever the current politically correct term is for thick as two short planks. Julian is a lot cannier, quite bright, I think, under his languid upper-class exterior. But like everyone else I questioned, they didn't see or hear anything relevant to my investigation, so with some reluctance, I must exclude them from my list of suspects. Next thing I have to do is find out more about these animal rights protesters. Shoot the shooters. No doubt there'll be the usual lineup of niffy dreadlock loonies and losers. Fourth of October. Back in the Barbican after my eventful weekend of chestings, wasn't allowed to leave until I'd been interrogated by a rather tiresome little policeman called Thompson or something. He just went round the same questions again and again. Did I see anything? Did I hear a gunshot from behind in the woods rather than in front of me? No and no. But there does come a point when you feel you've said no enough times. I thought I'd never get this Thompson character off my back. By the end, I was quite glad that Charles had insisted I say he and I hadn't been out of each other's sight all day. I suppose that provided what they call an alibi, and did finally get me off the hook. Came back to find another letter from the bank whose tone can only be described as threatening. <laughs> Fifth of October. Phone of Mickey Lipton, WhatsApp encrypted message to shoot the shooter's cell. <coughs> Had a predictable interrogation from the pigs today. Detective Inspector Paul Timpson, needless to say, about Lord Trumpington, needless to say, I couldn't help him. This is where the shoot the shooter's cell system works like a dream. I know the Chesting's assassination was our hit, but I literally don't know who did it. But so, however much the pig pressured me, I didn't tell him anything because I didn't know anything. Eventually, he had to give up. Yeah, results. Solidarity, brothers. <laughs> Notebook of Mr. Chavis, 7th of October. Julian Davenport came to my office this morning for an 11 o'clock appointment. He claimed he wanted to check the provisions of the Davenport Family Trust. I ran through the details for him and confirmed that currently he and his brother Charles are mutual beneficiaries of each other's wills. Though it is not my place to make recommendations in such situations, I did draw his attention to the likelihood of his brother Charles redrafting his will to reflect his changed circumstances. In fact, although I did not confide this to Julian Davenport, I am surprised his brother has not already taken such action. I can only think that he had been distracted by the death of his father and his impending fatherhood. Julian Davenport also asked me about the health of the family trust, and I was not able to give him any very encouraging response. 
So much capital has been taken out of the fund that the remaining investments are producing virtually no income. I think my client was aware of this and merely required confirmation from me. Very soon, his only assets will be his flat in the Barbican and his Range Rover. Whether he sells those to raise capital and move somewhere cheaper, or whether he takes the unfamiliar option of getting a job, <laughs> it is not my place to speculate. Fourth of February. A diary of Charles Trumpington. Absolutely marvellous day. At 3.17 a.m. this morning, my son, Reginald Trumpington, was born here at Chesting's. And he's a complete stunner. I'm already calling him Reggie, uh, though to be truthful, he doesn't really answer to it as yet. <laughs> Everyone's on top of the world. <laughs> But well, except possibly Vinny, who it seems didn't have a frightful time. <laughs> but I'm sure she'll shoot, soon perk up and we'll be back having little rose in the hay. <laughs> Yippee! Well, one thing I have decided, I I've been about to buy a speedboat for the lake, you know, water skiing, that kind of stuff, and I'm going to name the vessel in honour of the old one and the new one, the Reginald Trumpington. Gosh, I am absolutely over the moon! <coughs> 2016, 15th of April. I had forgotten until Charlie reminded me, but it's exactly a year since he and I first met. He said we should celebrate, suggested we should go out for a swanky dinner and come back here for what he insists on calling a little old roll in the hay. I told him to keep his bloody hands to himself. God, when I think what that baby did to my body. I don't see the creature much. There are nurses who feed it and do all the other disgusting things that have to be done to babies. I've been working out like mad in the gym ever since the little blighter appeared, and I think, thank the Lord, I have more or less got my figure back. I'm going to put it to the test anyway. Next Wednesday, I've told Charlie, I have to go to London to do some shopping. Next Wednesday, I've told Rollo, I'll see him in the usual place at the usual time. I'm not about to put my life on hold because of some bloody baby. <laughs> 16th of April 2016. Had a call from my idiot brother this morning, inviting me down to Chestings for the weekend of the 27th to the 30th. Said it was because we haven't seen each other for a while and need to catch up. But it's rare that he wants to show off this new speedboat he's got for the lake. Seems to have become very keen on water skiing all of a sudden. Funny, Charlie never knew a thing about boats. Whereas I have always known quite a lot about them. <laughs> Report from Detective Inspector Timpson, 29th of April 2016. Call from the Commissioner this morning. Another incident at Chestings down in Somerset. Since, as he rather gleefully reminded me, we never found out whether Lord Trumpington's death was an accident or not. He wants me to check out whether there might be any connection between this latest incident and the Shoot the Shooters group. Accident involving a speedboat this time. Two dead. Names, Lavinia Trumpington and her infant son, Reginald. Twenty-ninth of April. I, I can't believe what's happened. I, I'm devastated. It is <coughs> it was some malfunction with the engine that made the boat explode. Why on earth did Vinny agree when Julian suggested she take Reggie out in it? God, this is terrible. Talked to Julian Davenport. He was very interesting on the subject of his brother's marriage. 
Apparently all was not well there. Lavinia Trumpington had not allowed her husband any conjugal rights since she first got pregnant. Also, apparently, she's recently revived her affair with a former lover. I'll have to check that out. And Julian told me that shortly before Lavinia Trumpington set out on the lake, he saw Charlie in the boathouse tinkering with the engine of the Reginald Trumpington, which he thought was strange, given that his brother had never shown any interest in boats before. Another interesting piece of information from Julian, apparently Brother Charlie keeps a regular diary. I think I might need to look at those diaries as evidence. Forced to write in this, because that bastard policeman has had the nerve to take my diaries. I can't believe it. He can see the state I've been thrown into by Vinnie and Reggie's deaths. Surely he can't be suspicious that I had anything to do with it. Really strange thing happened today when I was shopping in Taunton. As I was stepping off the curb outside W.H. Smith, a car seemed to drive straight at me at high speed. Well, fortunately, I just managed to jump out of the way in time. It was a Range Rover. <laughs> Call from Julian this evening, inviting me weekend after next to a shooting party. Some friends <laughs> down in <laughs> capture <laughs> organising. Well, not proper shooting, obviously, this time of year, just lamping for rabbits after dark, you know, air rifles with powerful lights attached. It's not really sport, more like shooting fish in a barrel. Still, Julian said I needed to get out of myself. I, I said I don't think I'll ever get out of myself. I just feel so crushed and hopeless. I, I appreciate the thought, though. That's what brothers are for. I, I, I told him I'd think about it. 27th of May. Against my better judgment, I did go on this Hampshire shooting weekend with Julian. As soon as I got there, I knew it was a bad idea. Full of brain hosts whose only aim seemed to be to see who could get the most pissed. As soon as I arrived on Friday evening, I was tempted to turn straight round and go back to Chestings, but Julian persuaded me to stay for that night shooting at least. And, and, and a very strange thing happened. We were all wandering around the woods, smashed out of our skulls, crashing through the undergrowth, frightening off any wildlife that might have been out there, and too bladdered to focus our lights on a rabbit anyway, when suddenly I was aware of a light shining directly in my face. You know, like someone was aiming straight at me. It, it was only for a second, because then another member of the party came stumbling towards me. And this is a strange thing. As his light waved past, it caught Julian's face. Almost as if Julian <coughs> was the one who'd been focusing his light on me. Well, this is nonsense. Funny the tricks the mind can play when you're in an upset state. Anyway, I'd had enough. Left first thing the Saturday morning. Didn't really get a chance to have a word alone with Julian, just to say goodbye. But when I did say goodbye to him, he seemed really, I don't know, tense, angry. I suppose it was his way of sharing my grief. Now, Julian and I may not always have seen eye to eye over the years, but at bottom, he's a good bloke. <laughs> I've read the complete diaries of Charles Davenport, or Charles Trumpington, as he now calls himself, covering the past two years since before he met his late wife. And the conclusion I have reached is that when the brains were handed out, <laughs> he was way at the end of the queue. He certainly hasn't got the intellect to work out something as complicated as the murder, and I'm still convinced it was murder, of Lord Trumpington. What is interesting from the diaries, though, is the respect, almost hero worship, that Charles has for his elder brother Julian, who is an altogether more sophisticated operator. I think the next stage of my investigation will very definitely have to be a visit to Mr. Julian Davenport.
back at the Barbican from Hampshire, not the most productive <coughs> of my life, and I return to a message that I am soon to have a visit from the odious D.I. Timpson. It seems I've been clever, but not quite clever enough, and he's on to me. Pity. Just bad luck, really. Charlie never suspected a thing. I got an alibi set up with my chum down in Hampshire, and if any of that bloody drunken idiot hadn't appeared when I was about to shoot, no one would have questioned that Charlie had been the victim of an unfortunate accident. Just as nobody questioned that Lord Trumpington had been the victim of an unfortunate accident. Just as no one suggested that I might have been involved in the deaths on the lake of my sister-in-law and my nephew. Incredible, bloody bad luck. So now, I'm not quite sure if there's anywhere left for me to go. I think I only have one option left. I went to visit Julian Davenport at the Barbican this evening. No reply. I had to get the porter to let me into his flat. I wasn't surprised to find him dead in the bathroom. He had put the shotgun in his mouth, hell of a mess. Once the scene of crime boys had gone through their usual routine, I checked out the stuff on his tablet. He had kept a pretty thorough record of his misdeeds. He was still the beneficiary of his brother's will, nobody bothered to change that. If Charles Trumpington's accidental death in Hampshire had gone ahead as planned, Julian Davenport would have inherited chestings and everything that went with it. Tomorrow, I have to go to see the surviving brother return his diaries to him and generally eat humble pie. Never my dish of choice. <laughs> Detective Inspector Timpson came to Chestings around midday to return my diaries. He was all set to tell me about Julian, but I said I'd heard the news. I didn't offer him lunch. He apologised for his suspicions of me, which I suppose provided some level of satisfaction. Though not as great a satisfaction as that provided by all of my plans working out. <laughs> I was waiting for Julian in his flat when he came back from Hampshire yesterday, in the bathroom, wearing gloves with his shotgun. Then, what do they say? A brief scuffle ensued. I was always stronger than him. I put the barrel into his mouth, pulled the trigger and got out before the splatter hit me. I did it in the bathroom so that there wouldn't be any blood on his tablet. I so sensible of Julian to do his diary on that rather than longhand. No one can tell who actually made the entries. I knew the dates which were relevant and I didn't actually have to make many changes. Getting him down to Taunton on the right day, a bit about him fiddling with the engine of the Reginald Trumpington, that kind of thing. Then just type up the final entry, whack the keyboard down for fingerprints, and make my exit. Now I'm safely back at Chestings, which of course I own. <laughs> Not bad for the idiot brother, is it? And now, what shall I do with the rest of my life? Diary of Serena de Vere Townsend, <laughs> 15th of April, 2017. I've just met this absolutely terrific chap <laughs> at a little party called Charlie Trumpington, widow, a poor fellow, wife died quite tragically, quite a lot older than little moi but fascinated when I told him about Danny being a hereditary peer. <laughs> He's really nice. Kind of simple, straightforward, honest. <laughs> Not terribly bright, but generally that's a good thing with men. I think this could be the real thing. <laughs>